turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll go ahead and just have a word of prayer and then we'll get into it tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Heavenly Father God, we love you tonight. Thank you again for the opportunity to preach. Lord, I need you to help me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Cleanse me of sin and free me of self, Lord. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity. But Lord, if but for just one more time, as I stand behind this sacred desk, Lord, use me as only you can now in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 6, verse 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Now, we've got to remember another very misconstrued passage of Scripture. Miss, sometimes misunderstood, misquoted, uh, misapplied for sure. This is in regard to legal matters. Now, but hear me when I say this. Let me get this straight up. And I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, Christians, get, Christians shouldn't be going to court and Christians shouldn't sue another quote-unquote Christian. That's not necessarily what this passage of Scripture is talking about. Though there is some reference to it, but we've got to keep it in the context. <clears throat> what was going on at the church at Corinth, and let's understand this, the church at Corinth was a pretty good-sized church. A lot of people. And in Corinth, there was a lot of business dealings. Everybody all right? A lot of business dealings. So they were doing business dealings within the church. And some of them got out of hand. And some people who said they were going to pay somebody some money didn't pay somebody some money. And uh, Joe got mad at Dad, so Joe decided to sue Dad. Because dad owed him money and dad you didn't give Joe his money so Joe said I'm going to take you to court and the problem was when they went to court they were taking them to the I mean it's Rome it's, these are Roman type environments uh, and, and now watch when you have this type of environment again we're not going to take time to do it but you go back and, and, and look at Roman control and Roman rule. So here you have Christians. They're both Jew and Gentile type Christ, I mean Christians. But in some cases, these were Jews who were saved going and taking these issues into Roman courts. And Paul, and Paul is addressing it and saying, if I can paraphrase this, are you nuts? Have you lost your minds? And he's going to say this down a little further. He's going to say, have you no knowledge? Is there, is there not wisdom? So, so another way of saying that is, you have a lack of wisdom and understanding of what it means to be a Christian if you're having to take these legal battles into a pagan court. Okay? So the, a lot of times where a lot of Christians miss this is the issue is not the legal battle. The issue is all... Watch. The issue is always the heart behind the legal battle. That's always going to be the issue. Now, look, I, I, I believe this with all my heart. Listen, sometimes, sometimes we have to go to court. Amen? Sometimes there's a need to go to court. I, I, 
had a rent house for a while and I had to go to court to kick some people out. They, they woke up one day and said, we're not paying you any more rent. And I said, yes, you are. They said, no, we're not. I said, yes, you are. They said, no, we're not. And I went to court. And the judge said, yes, you are. Or get out. Amen. I mean, sometimes stuff has, I mean, we have to do that. Now, I don't know whether or not they were Christians or not, but here's the difference. That, and Paul's going to address this here in just a few moments. The difference is that was not within the church. Right? It's life. We are specifically talking about things that happen within the church. Because when we, when we have dealings with people in the church and those things go sour, they affect what happens here within the church. Be careful. And this is, listen, this is for young and old, right? So uh, one, one, of the, one, of, one of the young men uh, uh, loans another young man. Uh, they're, uh, I don't know, what's the most popular? They're, they're Xbox 360, I don't know. Loan the game system, all right? And uh, so Laredo returns a game system, but it's broken. Lord said, I'd break it. It was that way when I got it. No, it wasn't. Now, guess what? Now there's a feud going on in the youth group. Ah, now guess what? Now Miss Tammy gets involved. And Miss Charlotte gets involved. It's getting really ugly now. And then me and Randy get involved, and we just go have coffee somewhere. That's what we do. We, we go have bacon, eggs, and coffee, and we just, man. Yeah. Let us know when it's over. Yeah. But my point is, we're talking about conflicts within the church. And then, and how, now watch, how quickly they can snowball out of control. And when they snowball out of control, they hurt. It's not just a he said, he said, or she said, she said, or it's just not that. We disagree. Folks, let me tell you something. When there is an argument within my family in that house, we are all affected. Amen. When there's an argument in your household, except for George's house, if he has an argument, he, are, he always wins. That's all I can tell you, okay? That's the good thing about it, George. You have an argument with yourself and you always win. Within a household, within a family, that argument is always going to have an effect on everything around it and within those walls. And the church is no different. And if it is not handled properly, it can get out of hand and it can do serious damage to a church. And I mean painful, hurtful damage over a game system. I, I, know, um, I know of the two men, and I'm not, I would never mention them on camera, but there were two pastors. Y'all hear me now. Two pastors who sued each other. I'm talking about independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, King James, Baptist preachers who got in an argument over something and ended up going to court and suing each other. And the whole time I remember when I heard it was happening, I went, hmm, surely, this could be handled outside of a court system. Two born-again, Bible-believing, grown Christian men who are pastors, now watch, are going to take their feud to a lost judge and let him who wouldn't know Jesus Christ, if he walked up and slapped him in the face, he's going to determine their outcome. Let that sink in. But that's what's happening here at the church of Corinth. 
There are feuds that are beginning within the church, within church members, and they can't settle it within the church, so they go to a Roman judge or a Roman cultured judge who has no moral value. They're not saved. They're paganistic, and he's going to, his mindset, he's going to determine what is, now watch, an ungodly, are y'all not getting this? An ungodly, pagan, sinful, immoral judge is going to determine what two born-again saved Christians ought to do. And that makes zero sense. And yet it happened in Paul's day, and yet it happens today. So this is not deep tonight, but we're going to go through this very quickly. Just verses 1 through 8 in chapter 6. And I just want to tell you, and, and there's a key, if you will, ingredient to conflict in the church. This is why conflict happens in the church. This is why conflict cannot be resolved in the church. And the whole problem behind conflict, we're going to see this near, here near the end of verse 8. But starting in verse 1, he says, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust? So you get, here are Christians who are just going to take their matter to the unjust and not before the saints. Christians. If it's within the church, why can't Christians take this thing that they're arguing about to another Christian? Y'all okay? Why, why can't, can't we all just get along? Right? You ever heard that? There is conflict in the church. First thing I want you to understand is it does happen. But when it happens, there is a proper way to deal with it. And it really is very simple. Jesus gave us the proper way. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15 Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, stop right there, if thy brother, if you are a brother or a sister in Christ, you're in the family. If a brother, if another Christian, if another somebody in this church does you wrong, everybody good so far? Not saying that they, you know, that, that, that maybe they, we're, not, we're not erasing the fact that somebody did something wrong. They could have done something wrong. And by the way, a lot of people get upset because somebody did them wrong and they don't even know they've done you wrong. Hello? They don't even know. I've had that happen a number of times. As a pastor, I do that to y'all all the time. I make y'all mad all the time. I don't even know it. Oh, come on. You don't give it? I, don't tell me I hadn't stepped on some of y'all's toes before. I've, I've seen a couple. I've been doing this. Dad's done it. We've all, Joe's done it. We've all done it. We've all stood up here and preached something and watched people huff right out the door. And we think, boy, I sure made them mad, only to find out they were sick to their stomach or something else. But then there are times you just preach and you think it's a great message and you're having a great time. And I've gotten a phone call the next day and say, Brother Mark, can I talk to you? I didn't know I said anything. Things happen. He says, More of thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault. Now watch. Between thee and him alone. Alone. This is where a lot of pastors, I disagree with them. I love them in Jesus. Love you in Jesus. First step, a lot of pastors want to bring conflict and bring it in here and use this pulpit to, to air out dirty laundry. Right there. If there's a problem, those two people need to get in a room alone. Amen. And I've, I've seen this before. I've seen where it was a wife of a husband and the husband of another wife and the wife and the husband have a conflict. Do not get in a room alone. The couples need to come together. 
or the husbands need to come together or something, okay? Uh, all I'm saying is there's a, there's a way to do it. And just it's really simple. You just go to that person and go, hey, can we talk? Can we talk? That, th- this is how it works. He, said, he goes on to say, and if he, and if he shall hear thee, thou hast what? Gain thy brother. Pretty good deal there. If he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. Okay. Guess what? You back up, and now you come together with a couple witnesses, and you do it again, alone, in a room. Every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Then it goes to the pastor. Then it may be an issue unto the church. Because remember, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he's talking to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. See, now we're getting into a hard issue. And that's a little bit different issue. And I don't want to get too deep into that tonight. But Proverbs 51 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I'm just telling you, 90, listen, 99% of the time, if you just get somebody alone and go, look, can we talk? I'm telling you, 99% of the time, some, by the way, we say alone, sometimes a phone call, we live in a modern day and age, a text, a card that just says, hey, can we, and I have found that nine times out of ten, a lot of the things that, that, that stir up conflict within the church are a lot of times nothing or misunderstood words or, or things that are not, weren't meant to be said or done. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even, here it comes, as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You know, sometimes we just got to go into conflict with the right spirit and a spirit of forgiveness and a soft attitude. Number two, look at verses two through, or two and three. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that when that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? Angels. Do you know if there's going to come a day and time when uh, you're going to be able to go tell some angels what to do. That's what that says. Now, not yet, but when Jesus, come, after the rapture and after the tribulation, when we come back with Jesus, we're going to reign with him. We are going to rule and reign with him. I can't wait to that because there's going to be some ungodly people I hope live through the tribulation because I'm going to have some angels. I'm going to say, hey, go bop that dude in the head right there, that guy right there. Just smack him. And watch, amen, watch Gabriel go, what did he do? It don't matter, don't worry about it, just go smack him. Oh, come on, the list starts now running through your head too. Amen? No, here's what we've got to understand. We are children of the king. We are royalty, and one day we're going to rule and reign with him. And what Paul is saying is that you are going to be rulers of this earth. Act like it now. If you're going to be rulers with Jesus Christ and you're going to have say so over angels, this stuff that we're dealing with here on this earth is petty compared to what we're going to do one day with Jesus. That's what he's saying. How much more the things that pertain to this life. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 says, And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. 
Mm. So folks, we just got to keep that in mind. A lot of the things that we encounter in this life are not worth the heartache and the heat that gets poured on them. Four through six, notice verse four through six. I want you to see that earthly con conflicts are not spiritual conflicts. Judgments not pertaining to the church. A lot of these things that, that, that we get wound up about are not really pertaining to the church, but we make them to pertain to the church or make them part of the church. Verse 4 says, If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, so if you have uh, 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 something that pertains to this life or outside the church, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church, least esteemed that we're going to, again, take them to pagan type judges or people that are non-Christians. He says, I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? So he says, look, if you're going to have judgments and you're going to take them to a pagan judge, is there not a Don Smith you can go talk to? And by the way, what he's saying is that before you take them, before you take this cause to a judge, we already looked at it, that a conflict uh, with a brother should be taken care of alone, one-on-one. -on -one. Is there not a wise man? Now watch, here's the second thing. First thing, we ought to go to that person. If that doesn't work, he goes through the stages. But there's a second resort. We ought to seek wise counsel. Amen. May not want to okay that or amen that, but before we start getting into fist-blowing brawls within the church, go seek a neutral party. It's good advice. So if you go to the doctor tomorrow and he says, your head's going to fall right off your shoulders here in a couple of days. Are you going to go, okay. You're going to go get a second opinion. And if he says, second opinion says, your head's going to fall right off your shoulders here in a couple of days. You're going to go get a third opinion. And you're going to keep getting opinions until the opinions, that it's still, whoever, when it comes out three to two, and when you get a three to two count that says your head's not going to fall off your shoulders. Isn't that the way it should be with conflicts? Should we not go get some counsel? Here's the thing about adults. We are real good to give them counsel when they fight. I got three boys in my house all the time. I, I will say this. It was worse when I had four girls in the house. Oh, my word. I would come home from work and go, I'm going back to work. Oh, I'm, I cannot. I had an 18, 16, 14, and 12-year-old all in the same house, and I would come home to just, ugh. I got gray early because of that right there. That's why I grayed hair early. Four of them things. God love them, beautiful, love every bit of them, every one of them. But there would be, watch, there would be conflict. And there were many a time Charlotte would come, to watch, Charlotte would come to me, go, what do we do? There were, watch, there were a couple of times I'd go to Dad and go, Dad, what do we do? And then we go back and we resolve the comp. See, we do it with kids, but when it comes to us, mm -mm, gloves off, let's just throw some punches. And yet, we are children of God. And the process is still the same. We need to seek counsel sometimes and say, hey, what's the best way to resolve this before we go out there and ask an ungodly world to solve a godly problem? Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of, a little bit. i got to hurry because i got one more point and I want to try to close up a little bit early. And here it comes. You ready? Here, you know what the basis of all conflict is? Look at verse 7. 
Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Oh, you got it. I don't know if they got it, but you know what he has said? How come one of y'all ain't man enough to just stand up and admit that you're wrong? Let me, let me rephrase it. How come some of us adults aren't godly enough and Christian enough to stand up and just say when we're wrong? Why is it so hard for grown people to say I'm sorry? I'll, I make them do it. I make them do it. Can you go tell your brother you're sorry? Sorry. I make Dylan do it a lot. Make Dylan go tell her sister sorry. Dylan's up there looking at me. I make Dylan go tell her sister sorry. But when it comes to us, children of God, sometimes we just need to man up. By the way, I'm going to show you here. That is the true measure of a godly Christian when he can... Listen, there is nothing more godly than when somebody stands up and says, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. That's godliness. I mean it, y'all. That's, that's what it means to be a Christian. That's, by the way, that's called character. It's character. Character. Why do you, he goes on to say, why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Oh, there's the hard one right there. In order, in order to save and avoid an argument, just be defrauded. Uh oh. <laughs> I know. Somebody said, hey, he stole my dollar. Oh, in my house, it's he ate the last piece of pizza. I try, I try to teach him, oh, it'll break out. Who ate the bag of chicken nuggets? <laughs> ravioli in our house, that's fighting words right there. If there's leftover ravioli, there's going to be a fight over it. And somebody will call it, it's mine, and then I'll come in and eat it and then watch them fight because they start blaming each other. Who ate my radio? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One time I didn't realize, uh, was it Tucker? Somebody made Tucker some cookies. I didn't know they were his. And they were like up on the bar now, ooh, cookies. I started eating them. And Tucker came in, he started blaming everybody in the house eating his cookies. I just sat there a while because I just wanted to see how this one played out, you know. So then Charlotte got involved. I had to admit it. I was a godly parent. I said, I, son, I'm sorry. I ate your cookies. <laughs> but here's the thing. Sometimes even, now watch. Guys, this is hard. Sometimes even when you're right and you know this person's wrong and they're not going to budge, it is more godly to save care and is more character than to just allow yourself to be defrauded. Is it worth it? Here's what I always tell my kids. Is it worth it? It's ravioli. And they go, yeah, Dad, it's ravioli. <laughs> that was my ravioli. No, wait, wait, wait. Is it, is it worth it? Is it, is it worth it? fighting what what is it that the feud is over is it worth it or can we just go you know you can walk away and go you were wrong but I'm <laughs> but, but but is it worth it paul said isn't it better to just allow yourself to be defrauded i got to close this out nay ye do wrong and defraud and that your brethren and uh, what he's saying is that you do wrong when you can't work out your own conflicts amongst yourselves. And you're forced to take it to an ungodly judge. He said that's more wrong than it is not being able to work out your conflicts. 
And I just, you know, I, 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 I just tell you this morning, or this morning, this evening, one, one verse, and I forgot to read this to you, but here, this is good. James chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Oh, where's it coming from? Right? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust, have not ye killed and desire to have and cannot obtain? Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it among your lusts. And he's talking about lust in the flesh, the spirit warring against the flesh. But you have all these fightings among you. And, he, and here, here's pretty tough here in James. He says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Now watch, sometimes we get in conflicts and fights because we just want what we want. That's your flesh. He goes on to say this, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Listen, as Christians, as people of God, we need to have grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth, here it comes, the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. When it comes to conflict, folks, we need the grace of God. We have conflict oftentimes within the church because of our pride. And Paul's saying, folks, put your pride on the back burner, resolve it, and don't let the world have to get in the middle of this and dictate what God has given you. God has given you grace. Grace to resolve conflict. Stand to your feet. Heavenly Father, God, tonight we love you. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. God, we need you now. Help us. We're going to this time of invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to move very quickly tonight. One verse. Nobody comes. We'll close. We'll obviously extend it as long as the invitation is playing. The invitation is playing. The play here as soon as he's ready.